hello welcome to my channel so today I'm going to be showing how I make these decorative binders um, this was one I made years and years ago I use this one as a memory um, keeper it's got journaling letters photos just all kinds of fun you know ephemera and memories in it it has this one I did with napkins and paper and just all kinds of fun stuff but I started out with tissue paper and that's what I'm going to show you how to do today this is another one that I made years ago tissue paper paint ephemera this is what I keep some of my happy mail in cards letters um, I have been participating in a postcard swap for several years now almost 10 years I think and so having some binders with pockets and such to keep my keepsake postcards in is wonderful. I absolutely love it. And I think, I'm not sure, I think that this was, this was actually a piece of some Happy Mail that somebody sent to me and I made a divider out of it. So let's get started with the project. All you're going to need is a basic, um, binder. Um, it can be a small one, it can be a large one. Um, the project doesn't require a size, but a nice plastic inexpensive one. Some Maybe you can pick them up at a, um, a dollar store or a thrift store. There, must, there might be a lot of different options for you to get an inexpensive one. Since you're going to be covering it up, it doesn't really matter. As long as the mechanism works, it doesn't matter what the um, condition of it is. So I pour my matte medium into a container like this because it just makes it a little bit easier when you're using a, a paintbrush. And I have this little thing right here. It's a piece of a plastic cutting board that I get at the dollar store or Dollar Tree. And I got this so that I could, when I do the inside, which is optional of course, but I like to do the whole uh, binder. So when I do the pockets, it's kind of nice to have something to keep it so it's not gonna glue itself shut. That's optional. I like pockets. So I just I'm just gonna start on the cover. The wrinkles don't bother me. If they bother you, um, just give it a little bit more matte medium on top and that'll take care of a lot of it. But since I'm going to be painting over this in another video, oh, that's a little tear. Caught on my finger, that's fine. See, if you have a little tear like that, super easy to fix. Just patch it right up. So I'm going to let this dry and then I'll, because I'm going to need to lay it on its back to, to finish the rest of it. So I'm going to let this sit and dry and I'll be right back. Okay, well it's feeling pretty dry now. And if, if it, it's a little damp right here, but if it adheres itself to my work surface, I can patch it in. This is my little patch from earlier. That doesn't bother. I might put a, I might put a um, layer of gesso on this. I'm not sure. This is going a little bit quicker than I thought it would, so I might have a have time to do something more. So I'm going to cut to this point. I'm going to flip it up because it what it does is it can go a little bit underneath the mechanism. 
when it's wet, of course, it's not as easy to dog hair. There we go. When doing this, when working with tissue, you want to have a really nice soft brush so it doesn't tear up the tissue or napkin. Try to, um, what, I'm, what I'd like to try to do is fill in this part as much as possible. And I'm, it's been a while since I've done this, so and I know that's kind of a strange thing to experiment on a video, but you might learn from my mistakes, so I'm just going to keep going and see where this takes me. So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pull it around, and I'm going to put it underneath here and see where it goes. Use my ruler to get it under there, just to kind of get an idea of what we're looking at as far as that's concerned, this area right here. Because I'm, I'm just going to patch it in. The whole idea of this is not to have the perfect white tissue paper binder. It's to have a surface that you can work with when you want to paint and collage and do mixed media on it. And like I said, the pocket is optional, but I'm a pocket I'm a pocket girl, and so I'm keeping it. So what I'm thinking that I may do, let's see, let's see, let's see. Get some more tissue. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get some more tissue under this spot right here, and then lay this down. It's not going to be easy because I don't want to glue my pocket closed. Like I said, I'm trying a different kind of technique on camera. So this could be a disaster or this could be awesome. We'll see. We'll see how this works out. Now I'm going to try really hard not to glue my pocket closed. I've done it before and um, I just go back in and kind of pull things apart in there. But I really do want this to be close.
I think sometimes I'm tearing the tissue because I'm not putting enough matte medium on my brush when I go over it the second time. Um, well, you know what I mean. I think that's... The, if the brush is just a little bit dry, it might be tearing that up, so... Since it's still wet, I'm going to go ahead and lay this down on it because it will stick. Grab my ruler. a little bit of a fold it is still wet you if you want to wait till it's dry I would recommend that but I'm going to try let me cut this off so it doesn't cover up my pocket there. little fold so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit more matte medium on there. This is, you might be able to use, I think you can use, um, Mod Podge or even a little bit of maybe watered down glue for this project if that's what you have on hand just to keep the project less expensive. Matte medium is pretty pricey so I feel as if I just use it because it's my preference but I believe that you should be able to use you know experiment with the glue of course you want something that's going to flow easily. Oh, let me cut. Um, you want something that's going to flow easily so it doesn't tear up the, um, the tissue because it's so delicate. But you should be able to use that. Just be sure you use a softer brush if you're going to be using tissue paper. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over a few of these areas with some wax paper and I'm just going to kind of press down on a couple of the spots that are a little bit on the lumpy bumpy side that I would like to be a little bit flatter. I've dried it quite a bit but not completely. It's not tacky, it doesn't feel wet, but I know that underneath it still has a little bit of moisture on it and so because sometimes you can get glue on your fingers right and if you have glue on your fingers it'll stick to the tissue but I just kind of want to get as much I want to get as much I want to get it as flat as I can just because I like the look I know I'm just being a little bit on the picky side it's not necessary. I just know that if you are picky the way I am, especially in this area where I have this patch, see I can, 
either I can go over it with the back of my fingernail, just kind of pushing it, sorry for the shaking, or actually one of the things I've done before, if I feel like it's a little bit too bumpy, if depending on your project, depending on what you're going to be using it for, um, once it, when it's completely dry, you can actually sand it with some fine sandpaper. I think that was supposed to be open there, so I'm going to go ahead and, yeah, okay. There we go, okay. There's so many layers that you can put on this that it doesn't really matter if it's not perfect. Like sometimes I'll just leave that, to be honest with you, I think I'm going to just leave that kind of funky. And then when I, if I paint it or I um, collage over that, it'll just give it character. At least that's the story I'm sticking with. And if you have an area that you feel it, it's kind of coming up like that, once you start putting media on here or paint or whatever, that'll go away or that will adhere itself to the binder. Okay, so here, let me just go over the front with the wax paper. I don't want to tear it, but if I do, it's an easy fix. And I did, so what's that? There. There, see it's still a little bit wet inside there, so I'm gonna leave that alone. I was just going to do the tissue paper in this video, but I, I, I kind of want to see what, this patch area right here is kind of bugging me. And so I'm gonna put some paint on just to show how easy it stays on there with that tissue paper.
All right, so the paint, I liked it, but I felt like it was just a little too much. So I put some gesso on there and took some of it off and just kind of played around with a layer of gesso. And I have this beautiful botanical, and so I'm gonna go ahead and use this. And I might do a few smaller pieces of this. We'll see how it goes. So like I said, when I first started this project, you can layer and layer. Once you get your first layer of tissue on there, it's anything, anything goes. If there's something about just having that one nice layer on there that just holds everything together. Now, I don't know how much I want to cover. I feel as if I just want to do the front and not have it coming into the... So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on there. And, and one of the things I want to make sure that I do is that I have it closed when I do this. If I did it like this, let me show you something real quick. This, I remember, it's been a while, like I said before, it's been a while since I've done this project, but I do remember that if I keep it flat like that, and then I put the tissue on there and let it dry, when I open it up, it'll tear along here. Now there are little indentations to pay attention to here. So you wanna to try to get that tissue down in there and if it's not perfect, you can just put another piece of a different tissue on there and patch it. It's not a big deal, but I do want to make sure that I'm, I have it closed as I remember. You can learn from my mistakes here. So remember when these were black and then once I put the tissue paper on there and then painted over it, Covered it right up. All right, let's try this on there. This is, I wanna make sure that's the, which part's the top. Okay, so this is the top. I wanna make sure my flowers are going in the right way. Cause I started from the back for some reason. Okay, so push down, try to get it in that, let's see if you can get it in there, okay. Try to get it in that little, indentation. I'm not going to go over it with the uh, with another layer of the matte medium because um, this way I can push down on it and make sure it's adhered. Okay, so now I'm going to do this middle of the binding. There we go, okay. Push it down. If you need to use wax paper, if it gets, a, if you put a little too much glue, if it feels a little too tacky, just get your wax paper out. Use that, because that usually helps not uh, stick to your fingers. There. Okay. Okay, now, down a piece of wax paper just to be on the safe side. If you're working on a plastic surface, that's probably not going to be an issue, but I've, I'm working off of paper here. So, all right, cover the whole thing, all the corners, all the bits. Get as much of that on there as you possibly can in all the little areas. Okay, and then Lay it down. Now you might be wondering why I bothered to paint. It's because I wanted to show a different technique of decorating these in this video. I'm gonna be doing another video of like really actually decorating it in with collage in a different, different ways that I would like to, but in this one, I just wanted to show a couple of um, techniques that you can use to decorate your binder, um, you know, for kind of the first step, a little bit. All right, seems to be on there. Okay, so I'm gonna let it dry. I'm gonna make sure that it's not adhering itself to the other 
side by putting some wax paper in there. There, I'll make sure I put that in my um, supplies list. Okay. Okay, so let's let that dry. Okay, pretty dry. Might be a couple of spots that are a little bit damp, but it's dry enough. I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the rest of this off. I didn't really even intend to go past this layer in this video, but I thought I was having fun, what can I say? So I thought I'd go ahead and show a few um, techniques that you can use to start out with. I plan on really actually decorating this, or maybe even another one, I don't know, but doing a video on how I decorate um, these um, binders. Let me grab a couple. So this is one that I made years and years ago, different um, uh, era, I guess you could say, of my art journaling. I think this one's very, very old. It's got my, it's got a lot of my Happy Mail um, tags, different things people have sent me through the years. The keepsake, I love it. But this one was, as you can see, I did um, a layer of tissue, and then I went over that with um, paint. First, the, yeah, that's what I did. Sorry, it's been a long time. So I, I, it, there was a layer of tissue and then a layer of paint. So I actually went over this with varnish to keep some of these pieces on there because, yeah, they will, I kind of beat them up. And this was, yeah, this was a planner. At one time I used these as planners. And this has a lot of, um, I don't know, sentimental value. But I did the same thing, as you can see. Tissue paper, paint, and then I did some splatters. And then I think I did another layer of gesso or something to kind of um, dull it down a little bit. And then added all of these flowers. And there's some radishes. This one is a Christmas journal. And like the other ones, I did a layer of tissue. Then I did a layer of paint. Then I did a few um, scrapes of... Uh, gesso and then I went over that with some tissue paper so yeah I'm going to be doing a flip through of a lot of these like I'll do maybe one two or three in one video so I'm going to do some um, flip through videos of these journals and I found this one this is one that I did with napkins I don't think I ever got to the point of any tissue just the napkins and then it just kind of, that was all she wrote. As you can see, what I did is I put the napkin on there and then I pulled the pocket away from the tissue. See how that matches? So I didn't do it separately on this one. I did it all at one time and then I pulled it away. So yeah, this one came out actually pretty. So I might, I might want to do something with this one soon. And this is one that I did that has a lot of paint. This is a binder that I actually got from a thrift shop. It's very big, as you can see. So, as yeah. I said, I have quite a few of these. And they're a lot of fun. They're great for um, art journaling. They're, you know, put journal pages in there. They're great for memory keeping. Um, uh, put pockets in there for happy mail, postcards, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I hope you'll join me next time when I decide to share um, some of these journals and when I continue decorating my new my newest binder journal and maybe I'll even get this one out and see what I can come up with with that one so I hope you enjoyed this video if you did please give it a thumbs up and I'll see you next time bye bye